nobody knew we were doing it. That was pretty cool. And I didn't think anything about it. I just, yeah, okay, I'm going to go get up there. I'm going to work a radar set. And yeah. Do we something. got yeah. we got over there, and we're having a brief. I remember getting over. We didn't know where we were even going. So we got to Taiwan, and we're all sitting in a big room, and they're debriefing about the path of Lao and all this. And where the hell are we going? And that's when we all wake up. What are we doing here? I, you know, I, I, I had no idea. Because I don't think we even know we were going to Karat. Taiwan. No orders. We had no orders. The, uh, well, I, I, I knew we were going uh, to Karat. I didn't know really where Karat was. Yeah. But I, I, I'm pretty sure because somebody who had been there before us had uh, told me, well, that's one of the places you're going. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. So just a big experiment. I was, what, 19? Yeah. I just turned 19. This was this was this was a road trip to, well, to meet all guy. road trips. I was I think I was 21. So I was yeah. one of the older guys. You were one of the older guys. Yeah. I went in the Air Force the day Kennedy was assassinated. Really? November 22nd, 63, and then you came probably a couple years later. Yeah. We had fun. That was like, the funnest thing was being on flight status. Except them boring missions over the ocean, you know, oh, back yeah. in the states. Yeah. Did you ever go down to um, uh, Florida? Nixon? No. Nope. I did, I did no. that once. We got down there, I spent four days with my grandfather, never flew, <laughs> and it was the last time I ever saw him. So that was a worthwhile. My wife was pissed. She's going, you're going to leave me behind. You're going to go down. I said, hey, my grandfather's here. I might get a chance to see him. Um, Flying off of the coast here, the idea was to be there and be the early warning for the Russian bears, uh, the Russian missiles that would come in. Of course, by the time that had happened, they had radar busters, and we all knew that that if that was happening, before before we really knew what was going on, they would have homed in on the radar. We're dead meat. And, and we just, the only way that we could have warned anybody is the fact that we weren't there anymore. <laughs> Remember, um, Parent Air Force Base, survival school. We didn't even get a chance to jump out of an airplane. They, they pull us up on the back of a boat, let us go. We're in, we're we, in our poopy suits, we have poopy suits. So you, sometimes when you hear about these uh, boats uh, uh, sinking up in Alaska, these guys are, what they're wanting to get into is these suits that go around your neck and around here and you're fully encased. Except it takes about a half an hour to get into one. Right. So have you ever really had to get out in one of those and go in the ocean? You're still dead. But we didn't care. <laughs> we didn't care. That's why I tell people about the young people in battle and all that. You know, there was something on TV once years ago. It was called a series called War. So the reason why you take young people and you make them into soldiers. Because when you tell a young soldier to charge up a hill, you know, and go take this hill, they're not going to question that they're getting shot at. Yeah. Now you take a guy our age, they're going to say, you want me to go up that hill? Yeah. Uh, are they going to be shooting back at me? Yeah. I could get killed? Yeah. Well, then you go up the hill. I ain't going. Yeah, I'll follow. Yeah. I'll follow you. Yeah. So that's why you take a young man, yeah. because they don't care. Yeah. It ain't going to happen to them. They're bulletproof. Yeah. yeah. And, it all, and of course it does, sadly. Well, I understand that we did have... Uh, that one of ours uh, did crash uh, a few years later at uh, Tule. Yeah, I did. I did hear that. And, and uh, but I think everybody got out. And then the guys at Otis, they lost two or three planes. Yeah. And just prior to us getting there in the fifties, they pancaked one in at McClellan, and nobody got killed. Right. And that's about. That's about yeah. all I. And there were several times in McClellan that that when they get somebody new over there with all the fog and they want to land in and, and they had to try to focus on whether or not whether they're trying to land on Watt Avenue or whether they're trying to land on Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I guess one of them did come down and all of a sudden realized they were just about to touch down on Watt Avenue in North Highlands. <laughs> and then we had to uh, uh, try to take off before it got too hot and we had to the plowing. Then we couldn't take off. And one day it was on, on a mission and we had to abort. It's the only abort I ever did. And the you know, plane's ready to go roaring down the runway, and it decides it can't take off, and he just slams the brakes on, and you then then you know what what the seat belts are for, or whatever they were called. Uh, I only did that once. We lost, a we blew out a tire once, and uh, uh, I think in Japan, which no, no big deal, no big deal stuff. Yeah, but that uh, that one uh, senior NCO. Uh, 
you know, he, he, he was running up and down the plane trying to figure out what the hell happened. Massey was in the game. Massey and Mathis. Yeah, Ma yeah. Massey and Mathis. Yeah. Was in the yeah. Yeah. And when something happens, you're just supposed to go to your seat. And, well, at least I listened there. I just went to my seat. We had fun. Yeah. The missions were neat. The years, you know, in 1980, 81, I was working for Donald Douglas. In fact, working on the Harrier up there. And I'm using a light pen on the screen. And this is how we input our data. One day I'm sitting there with that light pen and I said, wait a minute. I used one of these before. Where'd that one? <gasps> Southeast Asia. You know, it was. I was already working with these things for a couple of years before it dawned on me that in 1969 we were using these things to, to uh, pick up our, the, uh, the, the call sign of, of the pilots that were under our control. And um, wait a minute, we were always had, we were always high tech. Yep. Now where were you before McClellan? McClellan was my first, my first duty. Station. Oh, and you stayed there the whole, the whole four years then? Yeah, well three years. Oh, great for you. I was in yeah. for eight years, and I did this. I did three years in Germany, and, and then in '68, uh, and then I went back in. I went to uh, Hamilton Air Force Base near San Francisco, mm -hmm. and then they called for volunteers. So that's why a lot of us came in in '68. Uh, you were already there, yes. yeah. yeah. So you'd gone, already gone through current and all that years before. Yeah, that. well, and I was and already upset. were out drunk a lot because that's right. <laughs> but Lake Perrin, if you were lucky enough to go in the summer. I'm told that they had all these gals out there in boats that would come and pick you up. Yeah. You know, these gals out in swimsuits, but I went in the winter. I went in the winter. You know, and so... I went in the winter, and it was cold, and you had, and you had drop them, they dropped you in the water about 9 o'clock at night, 30 degrees, and you got to inflate your... I said, oh, just pop the thing. You know, of course, they took all the CO2 cartridges out, so you had to blow it up. By the time you blew it up, you were already in the shore. Yeah. 